हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू माय चैनल प्रोफेसर व्यू बेंस टुडे विल सी केमिस्ट्री ऑफ एंटी एंजाइनल एजेंट्स बट बिफोर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट केमिस्ट्री ऑफ एंटी एंजाइनल ड्रग्स वी शुड नो व्हाट इज एंजाइना पेक्टोरिस सो एंजाइना पेक्टोरिस इज नथिंग बट इट इज ए चेस्ट पेन और डिसकम्फर्ट ड्यू टू कोरोनरी हार्ट डिसीज एंड इट ऑकर्स वेन the heart muscle doesn't get as much blood and oxygen as it needs this usually hap- happens because one or more of the heart arteries are narrowed or blocked which is also called ischemia now there are four main types of angina pectoris one is one is stable angina which is also called angina pectoris then unstable angina variant that is prinzmetal angina and last one is microvascular angina so these are the tests to detect whether angina pectoris or not so electrocardiogram stress testing blood test chest x-ray coronary angiography and cardiac catheterization then computed tomography angiography so these are the test which we use to detect whether the person is suffering from angina pectoris or not and treatment includes lifestyle changes obviously uh, the root cause of angina pectoris we focus on it and we change our lifestyle accordingly as per the suggestions of uh, doctors or physicians then secondly we have to take medicines then cardiac procedures some heart surgeries are there and then cardiac rehabilitation in which uh, we continuously monitor the behavior or working of heart so antianginal agents as per especially as per pci syllabus so there are vasodilators which includes nitrates and nitrites so example of it amyl nitrite nitroglycerin and etc then cam- calcium channel blockers so calcium channel blockers are verap verapamil bepredil deltazem nafedipine amlodipine etc then antihypertensive agents so lots of antihypertensive agents we can use as antianginal agent that is timolol captopril lisinopril enalapril etc last one is diuretics which is most important in in uh, diuretics there are again sub classification that is car- carbonic anhydrase inhibitors examples are acetazolamide methazolamide then thiazide chlorothiazide hydrochlorothiazide etc then loop diuretics which contains furosemide bumetanide then potassium sparing diuretics spironolactone this is the best and famous example osmotic diuretics last one is which can which is example is manitol one by one we will see so starting with vasodilators vasodilators are nitrates and nitrites so organic esters as we know these are nothing but are the esters of organic acids with organic alcohols where organic nitrates and organic nitrites organic nitrate contains r o n o2 and organic nitrites contains r o n o one oxygen less are the esters of nitrous acid hno2 or nitric acid hno3 with an organic alcohol r o h where attachment of no2 is an is on oxygen that is here uh, you will get the exact idea of nitrates and nitrites so this is the reaction alcohol are reacting with nitrous acid so form amyl uh, alkyl nitrite uh if you see here r o n o is there for alkyl nitrate and if we talk about alkyl nitrate so it is a derivative of nitric acid hno3 so here uh, alkyl nitrate is r o n o2 now if we talk about the mechanism of action of alkyl nit- uh, nitro acid dilator so it it includes nitric oxide stimulates the formation of cgmp as we all know now what nitro vasodilators do are these are the drugs which mimics the action of endogenous nitric oxide by releasing nitric oxide or by forming nitric oxide within the tissues 
now these drugs act directly on the vascular smooth muscle to cause relaxation and therefore serves as endothelial independent vasodilators there are two basic types of nitrodilators those that release nit nitric oxide spontaneously that is the example of sodium nitroposide this is gpat question which have been asked uh, i think one time in gpat in previous uh, years gpat and organic nitrates that required an enzymatic process to form nitric oxide organic nitrates do not directly release nitric oxide however their nitrate group interact with enzyme and intracellular sulfhydryl groups that reduce the nitrate group to nitric oxide or to form sulf nitrosothiol which then is reduced to nitric oxide nitric oxide activates the smooth muscle soluble gonilyl cyclase to form cgmp and increased intracellular cgmp inhibits calcium entry into the cell thereby decreasing intracellular calcium concentration and causing smooth muscle relaxation then nitric oxide also activates potassium channels which leads to hyperpolarization and relaxation finally nitric oxide acting through cgmp can stimulate a cgmp dependent protein kinase that activates myosin light chain phosphatase the enzyme that phosphorylates myosin light chain which leads to relaxation now here is the diagrammatic presentation of mechanism of nitrovasodilators so here nitrates release nitric oxide which activates gonilate gonilate cyclase now this gtp is converted into cgmp which activates cgmp dependent protein kinase and due to this activation of protein kinase chain results in dephosphorylation of several protein that reduce intracellular calcium causing smooth muscle relaxation now these are the example with structures that is amyl nitrite dipyridamol pentaerythritol tetranitrate sodium nitroprusside isosorbate dinitrate nitroglycerin these are the structures of nitrovasodilators so this much uh, is uh, ex expected uh, as chemistry of uh, nitrovasodilators uh, there is no sar for nitrovasodilator because all the drugs are have different series of structures and therefore they they don't have sar now moving forward to calcium channel blockers so currently approved calcium channel blockers that is ccbs bind to l type calcium channels located on the vascular smooth muscles cardiac myocytes and cardiac nodal tissues that is sino sinoatrial and atrioventricular nodes these channels are responsible for uh, regulating the influx of calcium into muscle cells which in turn stimulates smooth muscle concentration and cardiac myocytes con concentration in cardiac nodal tissue l type calcium channels play an important role in pacemaker current and in phase 0 of the action potential therefore by blocking calcium entry into the cell calcium channel blockers cause vascular smooth muscle relaxation that is vasodilation then decrease myocardial force generation that is negative ionotropy decrease heart rate which means negative chronotropy and decrease conduction velocity within the heart that is called negative dromotropy particularly at the atrioventricular node this is the meaning of negative ionotropy negative chronotropy negative dromotropy the meaning of these three words is most important as per as your gpat is concerned now structural activity relationship of calcium channel blockers which is, which is most important that is 1,4 dihydropyridine nucleus that is this now this nucleus 1,4 dihydropyridine is essential for activity if we replace this 1,4 dihydropyridine nucleus by any other ring or any other heterocyclic ring so we lost activity now substitution at n1 also decreases the activity then this substitution of phenyl ring at c4 position increases the activity however substitution with small planar or alkyl cycloalkyl group decreases the activity if you uh, put this uh, substitution of this phenyl ring uh, with an another alkyl group or cycloalkyl group 
activity decreases now if we substitute this phenyl ring with ortho or meta substitution it will possess optimum activity or highest accuracy that way that's why all the calcium channel blockers are maximum contains ortho meta substitution at phenyl ring at c4 position if we talk about c3 and c5 position so it optimizes the activity if you uh, put ester group at c3 or c5 position and other electron withdrawing group decreases antagonistic activity and may show agonistic activity then alkyl group at c2 and c6 increases the antagonistic activity alkyl group at c2 and c6 uh, means if you talk about this methyl group uh, r2 r3 r5 and methyl group so methyl group is at six position we have given uh, numbering from r2 so that is second position r3 is third then fourth position at uh, phenyl ring r5 is fifth position and methyl group is attached that is sixth position so alkyl group at c2 and c6 increases the antagonistic activity but all 1,4 dihydropyridines have c2 and c6 methyl group except amlodipine which have bulky groups this suggests larger group can we can placed as alkyl group so this is the sar of 1,4 dihydropyridine that is calcium channel blockers so this is most important as per as gpad is concerned now these are the structures of calcium channel blockers nilvadipine felodipine estradipine nifedipine amlodipine these are the examples now this verapamil deltazim and bepridil these are also a calcium channel blockers but uh, they don't have uh, sar actually because uh, they are having independent structure and they have not uh, structural similarities so we can't put uh, the sar of it deltazim is uh, benzothiazepine derivative remember it deltazim is benzodiazepine derivative moving forward to diuretics diuretics first mechanism of action obviously so diuretics drugs increase urine output by the kidney that promotes diuresis this is accomplished by altering how the kidney handles sodium if the kidney excretes more sodium then water excretion will also increases most diuretics produce diuresis by inhibiting the reabsorption of sodium at different segments of the renal tubular system sometimes a combination of two diuretics is given because this can be significantly more effective than either compound alone means synergistic effect to achieve the synergistic effect we give combination of diuretics the reason for this is that one nephron segment can compensate for altered sodium reabsorption at another nephron segment therefore blocking multiple nephron sites significantly enhances efficacy now carbonic anhydrase inhibitors so mechanism of action of it it inhibit the transport of bicarbonate out of the proximal convoluted tubule into the interstitium which leads to less sodium reabsorption at this site and therefore greater sodium bicarbonate and water loss in the urine these are the weakest of the diuretics and seldom used in cardiovascular disease their main use in the treatment of glaucoma we use carbonic anhydrase in glaucoma now, thiazide diuretics mode of action inhibit the sodium chloride transport in the distal tubule then because this transporter normally only reabsorb about 5% of filter sodium the diuretics are less efficacious than loop diuretics in producing diuresis and natriuresis now not less they are uh, significantly powerful to satisfy many therapeutics needs requiring a diuretics their mechanism depends on renal prostaglandin reproduction now production uh, because loop and thiazide diuretics increase sodium delivery to the distal segment of the distal tubule this increase potassium loss means they have they cause hypo hypokalemia this is the most important question as per as gpad is concerned and because the increase in distal tubular sodium concentration stimulates the aldosterone sensitive sodium pump to increase sodium reabsorption in exchanging for potassium and hydrogen ion which are lost to the urine the increased hydrogen ion 
loss can lead to metabolic alkalosis part of the loss of potassium and hydrogen ion by loop and thiazide diuretics results from activation of the renin angiotensin aldosterone system that occurs because of the reduced blood volume and arterial pressure increased aldosterone stimulates sodium reabsorption and increases potassium and hydrogen ion excretion into the urine then loop diuretics mechanism of action inhibit the sodium potassium chloride co-transporter in the thick ascending limb that is tse and this transporter normally reabsorb about 25 percent of the sodium load therefore inhibition of this pump can lead to the significant increase in the distal tubular concentration of sodium reduce hypertonicity of the surrounding interstitium and less water reabsorption in the collecting duct this altered handling of sodium and water leads to both diuresis increased water loss and natriuresis increased sodium loss by acting on the thick ascending limb which handles a significant fraction of sodium reabsorption loop diuretics are very powerful diuretics then potassium sparing diuretics unlike loop and thiazide diuretics some of these drugs do not act directly on sodium transport some drugs in this class antagonize the action of aldosterone receptor aldosterone receptor antagonist at the distal segment of the distal tubule this causes more sodium and water to pass into the collecting duct and be ex excreted in the urine they are called potassium sparing diuretics because they do not produce hypokalemia like the loop diuretics and th uh, thiazide diuretics the reason for this is that by inhibiting aldosterone sensitive sodium reabsorption less potassium and hydrogen ion are exchanged for sodium by this transporter and therefore less potassium and hydrogen ion are lost to the urine now this is the uh, overview of all diuretics here carbonic anhydrase inhibitors then on thiazide diuretics then potassium sparing diuretics then loop diuretics so this is the overview now chemistry these are the structures of carbonic anhydrase inhibitors so carbonic anhydrase inhibitor this is the, these are the structures again carbonic anhydrase inhibitors have structural activity relationship that is first is sulfamyl group is essential for activity that is so2 nh2 should be attached to heterocyclic aromatic ring then aliphatic sulfonamide are less active obviously if sulfamyl group is essential then obviously aliphatic sulfonamide will be less active that is aromatic sulfonamides are most active and 134 thiazole and so2 nh2 group at c2 position which leads to maximum activity that is this nucleus so2 nh2 and 134 if you carefully see sulfur will have first position then so2 nh2 will have second then nitrogen third fourth and then fifth so 134 thiazole and so2 nh2 group at c2 position have maximum activity then benzolamide with nh so2 ph here phenyl ring is attached five times more active than acetazolamide that is this so2 nh2 and ph so2 nh then benzothiazole derivatives are also active that is this benzothiazole derivative this is the example of benzothiazole derivative now aryl group can be further substituted with so2 nh2 aryl group we can change again more substitution we can have with so2 nh2 instead of having substitution like aryl group now moving towards thiazide diuretics so these are the structures of thiazide diuretics benzo thiazine ring which is club with sulfonamide group and we have synthesized this chlorothiazide hydrochlorothiazide and all this and second th uh, series is b that is chlorothalidone metazo uh, met metolazone indapamide so structural activity relationship of thiazide diuretics now this is the nucleus for thiazide diuretic this is the basic nucleus where this so2 nh2 
this SO2 NH2 group is say at seventh position is essential for activity. Now this N and R2 position second position can substituted by CH3 group. We can replace it by CH3 group. NH will be there and NH that hydrogen we can replace with CH3 group. Now this if we talk about this position so lipophilic substitution at third position increase the potency if you put lipophilic group like ch3 means all hydrocarbons are lipophilic so lipophilic group if you put at r1 position it will increases the potency of the thiazide diuretics now this nitrogen so if you talk about this position if you talk about this position one two three four five fifth sixth position then if you talk about seventh position and substitution on fourth fifth and eighth position with alkyl group diminishes the diuretic activity now r3 so substitution on sixth position with in electron withdrawing group is essential for activity for example electron withdrawing group is no2 group no2 group if you put at sixth position it will improves or increases the activity now if you talk about this uh, n c double bond so this 3 4 c n double bond is not necessary c n single bonded compounds are also more potent now h atom at second position is more acidic because of electron withdrawing so2 group so and that uh, property makes this drug water soluble now loop diuretics so these are the structures of uh, loop diuretics furosemide azosemide bumetanide and these are the examples torsemide and if you talk about the structural activity relationship of loop diuretics so this is the basic nucleus uh, for uh, loop diuretics now this cooh group should be substitution at first position must be acidic that is cooh with or tetrazole we can substitute it and so2 nh2 group on fifth position is must for the activity for loop diuretics now this r2 position electron withdrawing group at fourth position can be chlorine uh, cf3 oph or, or anilino or benzyl group we can uh, substitute this NH this second position and amino group can be substituted at second and third position at third position we can substitute amino group this R1 position aliphatic or heterocyclic bulky substitution at R1 position increases the activity and this is the SAR of loop diuretics now potassium sparing diuretic these are the structures of potassium sparing diuretics triamterene spironolactone and all uh, again this potassium sparing diuretics are not having the structural similarities so we can't uh, have the SAR for potassium sparing diuretics so these are the structures only now moving forwards to osmotic diuretics so osmotic diuretics work by increasing the osmolality of the glomerular filtrate they limit tubular reabsorption of water and thus promote diuresis they cause increase in urinary ph and these are the structures of osmotic diuretics mannitol glucose isosorbide glycerin and urea these are the examples of osmotic diuretics so this is all about anti anginal chemistry of anti anginal agents Thank you. Thank you for watching. Stay connected.